In this video, we're talking about the cost of carbon plated racing shoes. What is up everybody and welcome back to 40 Runs. Now, this is one of our, I think, world famous now, yeah, probably world famous, um, view interactive videos. I want to know from you, how much are you governed by price when you're picking that race day shoe? Let me know in the comments because things have got out of hand. So we've got here what is arguably the most expensive um, running shoe, 280 quid for Alpha Fly 2. And then at the complete opposite end of the scale, for 91 pounds you can buy the Reebok Energy X float ride. Energy X, which has a carbon plate in it. Now, this is £91, so almost £200 less. So, what is the difference between these two shoes? Okay, so for good measure as well, I've also chucked in the Decathlon um, carbon plate race shoe. This is £129 that launched a big fanfare, but it's no good. Um, but my point is, is that there's, there's shoes coming out now from the manufacturers that are at the complete opposite, opposite end of the spectrum in terms of price point, which is great news, I think, especially in the world that we live in with the cost of everything. I think it's good news that um, there's a full, some affordability in the running shoe world with regards to racing shoes. You, don't, you can get a carbon plate shoe to take on race day, but you don't have to spend big money. Um, but how much, how much performance are you losing? You know, all that kind of stuff. I, I'm, I'm super interested to know your thoughts on it. And again, this is the most important part of this video is to get your thoughts about it. Do you think these are worth £280? How much performance do you get out of these versus something like this? You know, is the money, the difference in these worth the money? Are, you know, are, is £200 going to make that much difference in your marathon time, for example? So let me know in the comments where you stand on this topic. Now for me, for somebody who is a running shoe geek, right, and is in a very privileged position where I get sent so much kit, it's ridiculous. Uh, I don't get sent these from Nike, um, mainly because they don't know who I am, so that's why I love what I can just say anything I like. Well, I might just say what I like anyway. But I love the fact of um, how much um, Nike don't watch our videos because the hard time I give them. But my point is I don't get sent these from Nike, so I have to shell out the 280 quid to buy these. But I'm very fortunate I get all the other shoes, so you could say that I'm saving money, and that's where. So when I do buy a pair of shoes, we go big, right? So it, it just, this topic came to mind because we, we had it, a couple of emails come in on the long run show. If you're not seeing that, it's a UK, uh, seven o'clock UK time live stream we do on this YouTube channel. So check that. It's also our podcast. It's one of the biggest running podcasts in the world now. Thank you very much to everybody who supports that. Um, but it's a topic that keeps coming up about these super shoes. Should you be spending that sort of money? For each, you know, what's this? Can I justify this? What's the best shoe? And, all that? And, and, and rightly so, especially in the world we live in with the cost of living crisis. Um, it's hard to justify this sort of money. But do you need to be spending that? And that's the thing. Because I tell you what now, right? You can run a marathon in these. And this is a carbon plate shoe. You can run a marathon in them and you'd get around just fine. To be honest with you, you can run a marathon in these, as you've got a carbon plate in it, um, and you can get them for under £100. It's how much value do you put on, on, you know, on these sort of shoes with these, these super foams, these super composite plates in them, and, and the technology that's in it. But ultimately, in the day, it's, we are runners, and we will run, and, and how much of the shoe determines our performance is, is down to an individual basis. Now, there is a reason these elites wear these shoes. They're obviously maximising their performance when they are wearing them, but I don't know about you, but I'm not an elite runner. So, yes, I'm trying to improve my times, but if I spent that £280 on, like, gym membership and, and worked really hard on my core, getting my core and getting my glutes, like, more powerful and maybe, you know, spent a couple of quid on a, a proper meal plan and got my nutrition really tight, would that get me... Would that see my times drop? Probably, yeah. Um, so it's, it's hard to argue, you know, for spending £280 on these when you could do your work and, and then go out and race in these. So it's a funny old conversation to have, this one. Um, and that's why I say I, this is another one of these videos where it's, it's driven by you. 
um, let's let's get this. Let's finish the video here now, and, and let's get this conversation down in the comments. Where are you at in this conversation with regards to the two ends of the spectrum? Two hundred eighty pounds versus ninety pounds. Do you need to spend two hundred eighty pounds on these shoes? Can you get away with spending ninety pounds? Is it going to make that much difference in terms of performance? Let us know in those comments. Whatever you do, don't buy this shoe. Just looking at it again, don't buy that shoe. The Kipper thing. Disaster. And I think, actually, last thing on this, <laughs> I've said it, but I do think it's a new space that they are going to be moving into. I think you will see more budget carbon plate shoes, which is a good thing, I think, trying to get uh, that technology to a lower price point. It's like Formula One cars, isn't it? All that technology, or, or a um, Mercedes S-Class, better example. All that tech gets thrown onto that car, and then in five years' time, you find it in like a, a Ford Fiesta, for example. That technology's come all the way down the value chain. So yeah, I think it's the same principle here. We're going to see hopefully improved technology in the in the in a lower price point like we've got here with the Reebok. And well done Reebok for coming out with this shoe. But yeah, how much difference? What's the difference between driving a Fiesta and a Mercedes S Class? Still a car, four wheels and an engine still goes forward. Still does the national speed limits. See what I mean? See where I'm at? Maybe not. Let me know in the comments. Right, we are definitely going to stop the video there, people. So I will see you guys down in the comments. Make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel, and I'll catch you guys later.